This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Like anytime I tell this story to someone new, they never believe me. Even when I show them the photo, they're like, ah, eh, that was edited, that's not real. So, you know, all I can say is like, I swear <laughs> on my life that this is true. The photo was not doctored in any way, shape or form. This happened like a decade ago and I've been telling the same story and showing the same photo to my friends and family for the past decade. So I promise you this is not fake. It's a very, very creepy photo. I do have a couple questions though. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to the channel. I am so excited for today's video. I can't wait to watch these TikToks with you guys. We have a lot to go over today. So starting with the big time traveler shenanigan that everybody and their mother has been talking about. I know that a lot of you guys want my opinions on it. I got tagged in it quite a bit. So we're going to just start off with that one because it's going to be a longer one and then we'll get into the rest. Today's video does have an extra special sponsor. So we are going to roll to that, but I will be right back with you guys and we'll get started. So back when I was in high school, one of my best friends at the time, her house was broken into and it was like really badly robbed. Right after her parents got everything settled again, they installed a home security system. Ever since then, I have always just wondered like, why do people wait until after something bad happens to get a security system? When it comes to my safety and my peace of mind, I want to be as proactive as possible. And that is why I use Simply Safe. Simply Safe has this exclusive 24 seven live guard protection and a smart alarm indoor camera. So their expert agents act within five seconds of receiving an alarm signal and they will take immediate steps to ensure your family's safety. Via the smart alarm indoor camera, the agents can even see and speak to intruders in real time. Imagine the shock and the panic on an intruder's face when they have broken into a home and suddenly hear agents talking through the cameras, telling them that somebody knows they're there and watching them. Simply Safe offers comprehensive security for your whole home with advanced sensors and cameras to not only detect break-ins, but fires, floods, and more. You heard that correctly. Simply Safe does not only protect you from break-ins. The reason that I chose Simply Safe specifically is because I constantly, I have constant anxiety about leaving my dog home all by herself. I am super careful, but I live in a townhouse and my townhouse is attached to my neighbor's townhouse. And I don't know if they're as careful about fires and stuff as I am. Like what if there was a fire or something while I wasn't home and Winnie was home all by herself? Because Simply Safe has this 24 seven professional monitoring, they are ready at all times to spring into action to keep your home safe and therefore your pets and your family safe. Even if you're not home, Simply Safe agents will assess the situation, they will contact you immediately, and they will dispatch first responders to your address. This gives me so much peace of mind, you guys. Like, I know a lot of us, including myself, struggle with like diagnosed anxiety, and my biggest fear is something happening to my dog. So I am just so grateful that it feels like I have guardian angels watching my house at all times. I installed everything myself. Like I said, I live in a rental. There was no issues with that. Nothing permanent was installed that would mess with my lease agreement. Their step-by-step -step instructions were also very, very easy to follow. However, if you do prefer a professional to come do it all for you, they offer that as well. So no worries. Protect your loved ones with Simply Safe. Save 20% off your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for a fast protect monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash Hannah the Horrible to customize yours. That's simplysafe.com slash Hannah the Horrible. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Okay, if you see my arm moving over here, it's just Winnie because she needs love. So don't mind me. So the first one we're going to talk about today is the time traveler TikTok guy. And I know a lot of you have already seen this. Uh, other niches have been talking about this too. It's going pretty wild over the internet right now, pretty massively viral. And as usual, I have quite a few thoughts. I actually heard about it a while ago from Robert Welsh, who shout out the fact that I was talking to Robert Welsh. I, I don't know. My life has come full circle. I don't, what even is life now? If you guys don't know who Robert Welsh is, he, I'll put his channel up here, but uh, he's a, if you like makeup and stuff, he also does react on his second channel, but he is a 
amazing makeup artist and his brother does skincare as well. So it's, I don't know, they're a great duo. So please go follow them if you haven't already or if you're interested in makeup, they're a great source for makeup. But anyway, so he was also talking about this on his React channel and he DM'd me about it and actually tipped me off to it in the first place. And then that sent me down a rabbit hole. And then of course I saw that I was getting tagged in it a bunch. So I thought I should probably talk about it. So, okay, here we go. So we're gonna start from the beginning for those of you that have no clue what I'm talking about. This whole time traveler thing started on TikTok with a creator named Alex Shawl, who is a real estate agent and was just making real estate agent content. Our first TikTok is from April 28th. So about a little less than a month ago. Let's just watch this first TikTok that started this whole saga. Let's just watch that together first. And then we kind of got to go through the saga first and I'll share my opinions as we go. So here's that first TikTok. This dude's coming onto my property to what looks like Rob my house but it actually turns out he is a time traveler. Let me show you that. I literally can't even make this up. Like if I, if I wanted to make this up, it, it blows my mind. This just happened yesterday. So as you can see, he's wandering around my backyard. I don't know what he's trying to do. Now he's like thinking like where to go. And he actually ends up going into my shed. So you can see he opens it, goes into the shed. So I'm fast forwarding the time so you can see there's no movement. He never leaves the shed. And I'm talking on the, the camera. I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you in my shed? Never answers, he never leaves the shed. I literally was watching it the whole time. So I end up calling the police. You could see in the last one, the police coming through the front yard. And then here's the police coming into the backyard. And you can see they literally go inside. They go inside and I'm talking to them. Then they go inside again, <laughs> like they're inside there and they come out and he's not there. And I, I've been watching this backdoor camera the whole entire time and he never left. I really watched the camera the whole time. He never left. Police didn't see him in there and like it blows my mind. Like, I don't know if there's a tunnel in my shed in the backyard. I don't know if he teleported. I don't know where this guy went or why he went in that shed. Um, let me know what you think because I'm like perplexed flabbergasted flabbergasted he is flabbergasted okay so a couple things right off the bat if you notice there are a couple of time jumps in the timestamps below on the video where he says he's watching every minute there is like a bout i think it's like a 10 or 20 minute gap i'll put it on the screen but I'm not saying that he just like cut out the part where this man left i don't actually i honestly don't think that happened. I think he is at this point legit as perplexed as we are. I think he really saw that guy go in his shed and never come out and it was concerning. And then the other thing about this video that actually caught me really off guard, this is what made me like, what the hell is this? I do need to look into this because he does actually call the cops. And a lot, as you've seen, if you've been watching my channel a while, you know that a lot of people that are setting things up, if it's an ARG, if it's a hoax, if it's a skit, whatever it is, if it's fake, a lot of people will make up reasons when people are asking them to call the cops, they will conveniently make up reasons why they can't do that, why they're not going to do that, or the ever so famous, they claim that they did do that. And then the cops say they can't do anything. The cops were no help to them. So those are usually the three excuses we get for why people don't call the cops when it's definitely warranted to call the cops. But in this case, Alec actually does call the cops. Like we see the cops get there and look around his property. It's pretty convincing. So this is actually a less important part of the story, but just to prove it, I am going to show you a small clip of him talking to the cops just to like prove that they are real cops. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Was he not in that shed? No, he was not. There's nobody in there. Both sheds. What the fuck? Okay, I'm sorry for wasting your guys' time. I really didn't see him leave the shed, though. So I don't know exactly. how he's not in there. All right. They go in again. Now, is it a possibility he faked the cops or like hired cops as actors or just called the cops even though he knew nothing was wrong and he was setting all this up? Yeah, that's possible, but very unlikely. And in my opinion, I don't think that's what he did. I honestly don't think, I honestly think that at this point, he really did think that there was an intruder in his shed and he called the cops to have them come check it out. That would just be so embarrassing. And he does explain later that he wouldn't waste the cops time like that, which I know that's just 
just his word for it. But I honestly just do really honestly feel like this actually is the cops arriving at his house. Okay, so here's the next video. He posts this one the next day after the initial video. I wanted to see the full video of what this guy does before going into my shed and disappearing and teleporting, whatever. Um, so this is a full video with sound. So you hear if he talks, he does talk at some point here. I've watched this so many times to see, but you can see him like wandering around, like he throws up his arms. He's about to talk. See, he talks right there, he says, damn. Like, what is he looking for? Like he's being super mysterious. And then he goes into the shed. So he's wandering around, then goes into the shed and closes the door there. So just for reference, this is what my backyard looks like. It is an Airbnb. I live five hours away. I can't go there and give you guys a tour of the shed, but I will be there in about a week. So I will do it then, but there's no windows. There's only one door and the door latches on the outside. So there's only one way to keep the door closed. So a lot of people were commenting saying, you know, the door opened again. Why is the door moving? And that's because the wind is moving the door and it's been very windy in Florida. Let me know what you think he was doing because he was looking pretty sus wandering around like that. Okay, so this clip is important because he does explain that this is not the property he lives in normally. This is an Airbnb that he owns. Like we said at the beginning, he's a real estate agent. And so he's actually five hours away from this property, which is why he was monitoring the cameras and why he can't like go check it out immediately. But he did assure us that he will go check it out once he's there. So I'm actually not going to watch the next couple of his videos with you guys because it's not that important to the story. He just like shows us what's inside the shed, which is a washer dryer, as you can see right here. And he just explains more about the whole Airbnb thing. But the next clip after that is where everything kind of starts to go bananas. So we're going to watch that together right now. We have an update regarding the time traveler that went into my shed and disappeared. And this is going to blow a lot of people's minds. And if you're still denying that this is real at this point, this is going to change your mind. So just a quick recap. This guy walks around my backyard, goes to my shed, opens the door, goes inside and disappears. All the cops, the cops came. They went in the shed twice. He wasn't in there. They looked. I looked like an insane guy. The cops are like, what is this guy smoking? And you can see he never came back until the next day right here. Notification on my camera that there's somebody in my backyard and this guy leaves my shed. And he looks right at the camera too. That guy left my shed. But here's the craziest part. This looks like the same guy, maybe, glasses, whatever. Let's look at the other guy. This was the other guy. He noticeably aged. Looks like the same guy, but aged. So him again, and now him. Same facial features, whiter hair. So I don't even know what to think at this point. Somebody explain this. He literally left the same shed. You saw the camera I put before. There was no movement that whole night. Then the next day, this guy leaves the shed, looks right at the camera like he knows, and he looks noticeably older. I don't know, something's going on. Somebody explain what's going on in my shed. I'll be going there in about a week to give a tour, since a lot of people are asking. But uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like, I don't even know what to think. Did he time travel? Is this a different person? Who is this new guy? Is it the same guy? Let me know what you think, because this blew my mind. Okay, so to catch you up now, he is claiming that he saw a young guy with glasses who was kind of like had a receding hairline go into his shed and he never saw him come out and he disappeared. The cops couldn't find him. And then he's saying that instead, like the next day, an old man that looks exactly like the young guy except older came out of the shed without ever going in. So like this is straight up proof that there's time travel. A couple days later, we're now on May 3rd and Alec posts this video. If you still don't believe the story about the time traveler that went into my shed, disappeared and then came back in the future, this video is gonna change your mind. There's so much evidence supporting this theory. This guy named Matty Ice, he's been looking into this a lot. It's funny because he actually made a skit on part one, kind of like making fun of me, but now he's come around to actually looking into this because this is real. So he's been looking into this story and he found some crazy evidence. To start this off, I don't support reaching out to anybody's families or anything like that. Um, this is all speculative, but evidence kind of makes sense. So. What he did is he did a reverse image search and he found this guy 
who looks pretty similar to our boy here. The crazy part is this guy was obsessed with time travel. And you can see nine years ago, he used to post on blogs talking about time travel and how it works. So he graduated from Harvard University, which is, you know, obviously impressive. So this guy knew his stuff. He was obsessed with time travel and he looks like our guy. So it's like, okay, it's probably him then, right? This guy died in 2018, six years ago, which by the way, how was 2018 six years ago? That's, that's crazy in its own. But six years ago, this guy died but he looks the same and he was obsessed with time travel. He also found this, which is family members saying they miss him and that they you know, love him and stuff like that in November, 2018. He also found this, which is the same thing talking about his death, in July of 2017. So this one also says he died in July of 2018, but then they posted in 2017. It's possible that they edited this text to you know, give him a shout out how he passed away. Maybe his picture was posted beforehand, but still a little fishy, right? It's in 2017 saying, you know, he died in 2018, but whatever. He also found this interview notes, which I guess he was interviewed and somebody took notes of the interview. And in this interview, he was talking about his obsession with sound and time travel and how everything like that works in another dimension. This is all speculative. I didn't do any of this research. This is all Matty Ice. Um, but this is crazy because there's a lot of coincidences. This guy looks the same. He was obsessed with time travel. He died. Somebody commented about his death a year before it happened. Mentioned that um, maybe the body wasn't found. I don't know how accurate that part is. But the coincidences going back to this guy who looks like our time traveler. So yeah, pretty crazy. Um, I definitely urge you not to reach out to this guy's family. They probably don't want to talk about this. Um, I know if you know I had a family member pass away, I wouldn't want somebody calling me about this. But yeah, pretty interesting. Um, you know, tag me if you guys find any more info on this. So I just have to point out that this is not the first, I think this is like the third time now he said like, if you don't believe me about this, this is going to change your mind or something like, I can't believe people don't believe me. I'm not making this up. And I just feel like if this was as compelling as you thought it was, you wouldn't have to convince us so hard of that. Like, I just find that weird when people are like, no, seriously, I'm not lying. You're going to think I'm lying, but I'm not lying. Like that just always is just like, anybody can say that, you know? And I know there's no ill intent behind telling us that. Like, I know that it's probably out of frustration that at this point he really is confused about what's going on and people are telling him that he's setting it up when maybe he's not intentionally setting it up. And <laughs> when he just put her paw on my hand. <laughs> You're so cute. It comes off a little bit as like a kind of a passive way of telling us that we're dumb for questioning something like this. When you literally went from such a huge jump of somebody breaking into your yard, which is of course trespassing and wrong, to this must be a time traveler and this guy that passed away is him. I just feel like it's a really reasonable, not so outlandish thing for people to be questioning what's going on here and trying to find rational explanations. It really frustrates me when people are like, it's paranormal or it's occult or it's this or that, or it's not outside of this realm, but they don't look for any rational explanations. And if people do try to look for rational explanations, they're like, no, sorry, you're dumb. You know, I'm not saying he's calling us that. I think he looks like he's a very nice man. It's just like, you know, it just irks me the wrong way. So that being said, my actual thoughts on that video are that that old man does not look anything like I don't think any of those men look like each other personally. I feel like they just all have square glasses. I feel like if none of them had glasses or only one of them had glasses, I don't think we would be saying that they look alike. I think to a lot of young people in younger generations, especially like teenagers, a lot of older people look the same to them. I think like I I don't mean that in a mean way, but it's just kind of like all old people, they have, you know, they're, they look kind of wrinkly and they have gray hair and maybe receding hairlines and glasses. And I just feel like 
this is confirmation bias and that we're just kind of looking for ways to connect the dots where there aren't dots to connect. And I just feel like none of these men look alike, especially that man in the picture, the man who passed away, that was a real, you know, man, his hairline is completely different. I just don't think any of these people, I do, I do understand why the young guy and the older guy look similar. They're both wearing glasses. They both do have kind of a similar hairline, but I just don't think that we are able to see them close up and detailed enough to know if they're the same person. Like it's important to be able to see somebody's earlobes when we're trying to determine if they're the same person or not, or like tiny birthmarks and stuff like that. And I just think it's so far away that there's no way to tell if this is the same person or not. I don't personally think they look that alike. We're not going to go too far into this because this is going to be long enough as it is, but there's this whole other side theory that the old man is Stephen King. There's a whole other video series, side theories and hypothesis that people are making that the old guy coming out of the shed is Stephen King and that young guy going in was a young Stephen King. Again, I don't think Stephen King looks anything like these men. And also the reason people think that is because Stephen King wrote a book about a shed having a portal once, which is just, it's not Stephen King. Okay. But can we all agree on that? Like, that's just, that's silly in my opinion. Okay. So as promised, Alec goes back to his Airbnb a few days later and he starts filming around and he films himself going into the shed and I'll show it right here. We don't need to react to the whole thing, but he shows himself touring the shed. Nothing is out of the ordinary. There's a washer dryer in there as he showed us before, and there's no portals, no sign of anything nefarious or strange about the shed. So he puts a camera in the shed and he records an entire night in the shed and nothing happens nothing out of the ordinary that anybody can find that when he films the entire night live streaming the shed okay now a lot of people are accusing him at this point of doing this to promote his airbnb like is he getting fewer listings on that property and it's a bad bad area in Florida that nobody really wants to stay at. So is he setting this entire thing up so that he can have a viral moment on TikTok? People will then book the Airbnb because they're going to want to go investigate it themselves. And if you book an Airbnb, like you can go back and look at the shed and everything like that, even though I think he has a lock on the shed now, which as he should, but it's just really interesting. So that's what a lot of people are accusing him of. And he has come forward and said that is not the reason. In fact, I have recently taken the listing of this Airbnb be off of the Airbnb website. So you can't even book it anyway. So I'm not doing this for money or to promote my Airbnb. There's been other videos. Again, I'm not going to bore you with every single detail. You can go watch and I do encourage you to go give him the view, not me. Um, if you do want to go watch his videos, but he hires a psychic to come to his shed to check it out. Nothing happens except the psychic knows the entire story. So it's obviously pretty rigged in my opinion. So then though, he goes to the neighbors and asks them, he has photos of these people from his camera and he goes to ask the neighbors if they recognize them. And that video, I do want to watch with you guys. Hey brother, how's it going? Right. I live nearby and I have this guy, this guy, and then this guy, and then go to the next one, and this guy. They come onto my property and go into my shed. Have you ever seen this young guy before with a guest shirt? Or this old guy? Yeah, this guy the same guy. Yeah, they, they, they look like the same guy, yeah. I think I've seen this guy before. The old guy? Yeah. I feel like I've seen the man sell him something. He sells you something? Like, like shit, shit, items. Like repair shop stuff? I don't know exactly, I don't remember. But I think I've seen him as opposed to any other in here. I feel like I've seen the shirt, the pants. The same outfit? I think so. The logo right there. I, I, I feel like I've seen him before. And he carry a bag sometimes. So he comes around here a lot? Not a lot. No? No. But I feel like I've seen him. Okay. Not, and then, not these guys. Like him, see how red and bald he is up there? And they got like white shoes. I, I will remember him. You never mean, seen you ever seen this guy? You think this guy looks like this guy or not? I think this guy looks like this guy. Yeah. yeah. So and how long you been working at for? Six months. Six months and you never and you only seen this guy just come a couple times. I feel like I've seen him while I work here. Yeah. Alright. Thank you, brother. You seen this guy before? He's, he's not, not he's trespassed around the store. He's not this guy's not allowed in the store. He's not allowed in the store. And what about this guy? This guy I never seen. I never seen him. Never seen that guy? Okay. 
And this guy looks no same thing? Nope. No? Okay. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that video in just a second. I do have to give Alec props for giving us pretty authentic footage of this. This is why I really don't think he was like setting this up from the beginning. We'll get to what I think in just a second of what I think of this whole situation, but I honestly don't think that he was setting this up in the beginning because he went in, it's very clear that he didn't set these people up with a script. Like it's very clear he didn't go talk to them beforehand to be like, hey, I'm making a TikTok series. Can you guys say that you've seen these guys around or that, yeah, sometimes you see him and sometimes you see him until he kind of like, lead us around or anything and um some of them said like no i haven't even seen him i maybe recognize that but they have no idea what he's talking about and i do want to give credit to alec for posting that for us to come to our own conclusion about that but also that he wasn't like leading the witness you know before he asked them and everything so i do want to give him credit for that however i think the most important thing to note here is that the young guy the store owner that lives nearby said that the young guy she knows who he is and that he's not allowed in the store He's been banned from her store. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so given everything laid out right now, here is my theory about the entire situation. As many of you are probably thinking, so let's start with the young guy going into the shed and not coming out. A lot of people in the comments have pointed this out and a lot of you guys have pointed this out is that ring doorbell cameras glitch a lot. And some people in the comments have even said that like, um, what are you talking about? My dog looks like it teleports across the yard all the time in my ring doorbell camera because it glitches and misses entire seconds of time. So to a lot of people, it's highly likely and myself included that this guy did leave and he probably left in the other direction. So he wasn't on camera that long, but he probably did leave the shed and it just didn't show up on his camera. The camera does not c pick up every single movement, right? It gives you a good idea of the overall picture of the yard, but it doesn't pick up every tiny detail like you can see on my camera now. I'm filming every movement I make. You know what I mean? My camera doesn't glitch like that because I'm recording. It's a high quality camera for YouTube. It's not for like monitoring your yard. So it is very likely. And like I said, we missed some pieces of the footage. I'm not accusing him of cutting out or editing the footage because I honestly don't think he did. But I think what happened is he was looking, it glitched and he just disappeared and then he didn't come out. But then it, the door was open because he did leave and didn't close the door behind him. And then Alex, Alec was like, where the hell did he go? He's not coming out and I didn't see him come out. So understandably, he legitimately calls the police and asks them to come check out his property because he saw an intruder, but he's not there to check it out himself. I honestly think that that is what happened at the beginning. And I do think that maybe he didn't think about the camera glitch thing. And he was like, whoa, that is really strange. I have to post this on TikTok because that's wild that he just went in, didn't come out. And even the police came and confirmed that he wasn't in there. I think it's very clear that he did leave and he doesn't have it on the camera because the shed door is open. It wasn't open before. He opened the door and then didn't bother to close it on his way out. Okay, so that's the young man. Now let's move on to that old man that comes out of the shed without seemingly have ever going in. Notice that no time in the story does Alec explain why he doesn't have the footage of the old man going into the shed. He has no way to prove that he what he claims is that the old man came out of the shed, but never went in. He shows us all the footage of the man leaving the shed, including him looking up at the camera. He even has another video of the old man leaving and going across the street. And when he walks off his property and leaves, but he never shows us the time or the footage, which he has the 24 seven footage as he claims, he never shows us the footage of him going in. So he never proves in any way that the man didn't enter the shed. You know what I mean? So it's at this point that I'm suspecting that Alec really did see the old man enter his property and go into the shed, but he kind of conveniently leaves that out and never shows us that footage or claims that that footage doesn't exist. He claims that the front gate is open because of his cleaners, 
which is totally possible, but that still does not prove that the old man didn't enter the property in the first place. And it doesn't prove that he doesn't have that on camera. Does that make sense? Like, I'm just saying that whole big chunk of the story is conveniently missing. I think Alec at this point does kind of realize that it probably was a camera glitch and that this old man has nothing to do with it but it made a good story and it's still really trippy that the first young guy went in and never came out. And so it still makes a really good viral TikTok moment. Now everybody's invested. What I personally believe, and this is what I told Robert Welsh too when we were talking about it as well. This is what I personally believe. I think that it's Florida. There's an area, you know, it's Florida. There's some sketchy areas in Florida. And I think that the uh, local homeless folk or possibly the local uh, people that might be on drugs or addicted to drugs. They might not be, but maybe they're just homeless. And they have figured out that there's an Airbnb here. And therefore, there's a lot of the time when nobody's there, when the property is vacant and they can go and break in and go get out of the sun in the shed for a minute. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's it's really hot in Florida and they have figured out that when there's no cars in that driveway, that house is completely empty. So the local homeless folk that do live in that area, they go into his yard and go into his shed to take a break from the sun to do God knows what. I'm not saying it's right. It's still a crime. They shouldn't do that. It's still breaking and entering and trespassing. But I think that is way more likely that these are just people that don't really have a solid place to stay or perhaps they are dealing with a drug addiction or something like that. So they have found this kind of place to temporarily squat in the middle of the day before they move on. This theory is further strengthened by, I told you to keep in mind that lady who said, who owned the store and said, he's not allowed in this store. That proves that the locals know who this guy is and he has obviously either wreaked havoc or stolen something or did something that they didn't like and they banned him from their store. So he's obviously, that tells me he's well known in the area and known for doing stuff like that. Like usually you don't get banned from a store if you didn't do something either super inappropriate or obnoxious or stole something or something. So that would make it more likely that he would also be the type of person to go break into people's yards, especially if they're vacant and go use their shed for a little bit. And then this is all concluded by the fact that he has showed us in the shed. Like like I said, I don't think he's doing this maliciously. Alec, I don't think is doing this maliciously because he is being very straightforward with us. He's showing us everything. He's not doctoring evidence or like editing in ghosts or portals or anything in his shed. He's showing us the shed and there's nothing in there. The average person without TikTok, I'm just saying, or social media or the opportunity to go viral, the average person would not jump to oh my God, it must be a time traveler or a portal or a tunnel. They would just go, oh, my camera must have glitched. I better put a lock on this shed because obviously local people without homes going in. I think that's all there is to it. I just think it's wild that even after going in and seeing that there's nothing there, like he's still sticking to this story. But you know, maybe it's all just because we all need entertainment because we're all going nuts. I get it. I'm not mad. It's just like, it's a wild story and it did push us all down a rabbit hole. It's just like, I just get frustrated when we're the ones being gaslit, you know, like you guys are the crazy one for questioning this. So anyway, okay, that was the time traveler TikTok. Let's move on. The rest of the TikToks today are all really cool, but they are all just like um, a little bit shorter. So let's see how many we can get through today. I'm trying to get through more TikToks because I'm getting tagged in so many good TikToks. I want to talk about all of them, but I can only do one video at a time, you know? Okay, this next one is from a woman named Jordan from Jordan D. Pascal, I think is how you say her name. Big jump scare warning for this one. It's not a sound and audio jump scare but it's a photo jump scare. Like she's gonna show us a photo at the end and then she's gonna zoom in on the scary thing. Like just want everybody to be prepared for that. I will show her photo in my thoughts when I talk about the video. So if you wanna skip it, if you don't want the jump scare, then you can go ahead and skip. So, okay, let's watch that. A ghost story that sounds completely unbelievable, but is entirely true. I have a story and the photo will be at the end. I just wanna preface by saying like, anytime I tell this story to someone new, they never believe me. Even when I show them the photo, they're like, ah, eh, that was edited, that's not real. So, you know, all I can say is like, I swear <laughs> on my life that this is true. The photo was not doctored in any way, shape or form. This happened like a decade ago and I've been telling the same story and showing the same photo to my friends and family for the past decade. So I promise you this is not fake. 
I went to school in Dahlonega, Georgia. It's in the North Georgia mountains. There's a lot of history there, a lot of ghost stories. It's like where one of the first major gold rushes happened in America. So my husband and I, I think he was like my fiance at that point in time, but we went on a ghost tour that was held in our college town. This ghost tour, you go to local buildings and areas that are supposedly haunted, and there's a tour guide who tells you stories, and you know, I mean, it's a typical ghost tour. We were in front of this one house, and I have been taking pictures the whole tour, but for some reason, this house, I just felt like I really needed to capture something. I don't know, I felt the urge to get my phone out and start taking photos. So I ended up kind of walking away from the group, the group was to my right and I, you know, walked over maybe 20 feet or so to the left just to be kind of alone and to get some closer photos of the house. And my husband can attest to this because he stayed with the group. He saw me go off to the left. He saw that no one was near me. I start taking photos of the house. I don't notice anything strange at the time. But it wasn't until like 10 minutes later that I was flipping through photos that I noticed a face in like the bottom left corner of this photo. It almost looks like, it looks like a face with like two black holes for eyes. Kind of like a woman maybe, I don't know. Anyways, I, I show it to the tour guide and she is shocked because again, there's no explanation for what it could be. There were no animals around me. Someone asked if it could have been an owl. Like it wasn't an owl. There were no people around me. So it's just, and it is very clear. When you see the photo, you'll be like, oh yeah. So we were kind of shocked. The host of the ghost tour was shocked. It's even creepier is that night when we headed back to our car after the ghost tour, it was in a public parking lot and we're walking up to the car and I noticed that the passenger seat door is wide open. All the lights are on in the car and I get up there and my purse is in the front seat, just nothing had been taken. The door was just wide open and the lights were on for no reason. <laughs> and we definitely did not leave it that way. Um, so that was weird. But anyways, I'm gonna put the photo here so you can see it. Um, we did eventually try to like brighten the photo up to see if you could see anything else, but it still just, just looks like a head and a neck. So I don't know. Again, it's a story that has stuck with me for the past decade. I still get chills when I think about it. Like I have goosebumps on my arm right now. <laughs> I feel like someone's watching me too. I'm getting paranoid, but. <laughs> But yeah, that's my ghost story. That's creepy, right? I do love her story. And I do, like, I am inclined to believe her in the sense that that is what she experienced. Like, I don't think that she thinks that it's set up, if that makes sense. Like, I think she is telling the truth. It's just that I'm, I'm not positive that it's a ghost. I don't know. Let me talk about it for just a sec. So going with that, like, assuming, let's just assume she's not lying. Let's assume that she is not only positive that there was no people around her, but that if we were there, we would also see no people around her. There was no one around her because my first thought was that was like, it was somebody else on the ghost tour that got that photo bombed your photo. And because you took it in the dark, like that's what it looked like, you know, assuming that that is true and that there was nobody around her whatsoever. It was dark. So it's possible somebody was there that she didn't see. But, you know, assuming that he, this does look like a ghost. It's a very, very creepy photo. I do have a couple questions, though. First of all, the first thing that trips me out is that this is the photo she shows us at first, but then she zooms in and the photo is different. Like, it's the same photo, but, like, the zoom in, like, the girl, the girl or the ghost is, like, really cut off in the original photo. Like, you can only see a tiny sliver. And then when she zooms in, you could see, like, the entire face. And I guess I'm really confused about that because as far as I know, TikTok doesn't cut off your photo when you're trying to post it, right? Like, maybe I'm wrong about that. But as far as I know, like, I tried posting a photo too and the whole thing showed up so I guess I don't really understand why it's cut off like that and then when she zooms it's it's not and then the other thing I did was I did 
a screenshot, the photo, the zoomed in photo of this ghost. And I brightened it. I took the brightness all the way up and I turned the contrast all the way down. That was on my iPhone 15. And I'm just explaining that to you so you guys can all recreate exactly what I did at home if you wanted to do it yourself. So my question is, this is the photo I get when I do that, when I turn up the brightness all the way and turn down the contrast. And my question about this is... What is this line right here? Like, why is it different shades of black? Why is there like a line where it's like this black is almost like a lighter purpley black and then it's a darker, deeper, bluer black where the house is? And then her shirt is the same color as that lighter black. That just seems kind of weird to me. There's like a perfect line up and down. And then it does look like this girl, it does look like a, it's not a white, pale face it's definitely a skin colored face in my opinion and you can like see the hair and stuff and she says that it's like not a torso or anything but I do kind of see a torso like I almost see like a sleeve right there again if you brightened it up really bright like I am right now so I guess I'm a little confused. It does kind of look like a really creepy person just standing there. I don't know, I, the, but I am, it, what's tripping me out is that she legit does seem freaked out. Like she really does seem that like this was completely what she experienced and that that whole thing with her car when she went back to her car is really creepy. So if this one does, I, I'm, I'm not saying this one doesn't creep me out because it does. Like I would be thinking about this for forever too. It's just that I'm kind of confused about the weird stuff in the photo. So I don't know if somebody wanted to explain that, that would be real great because I am, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so the next TikTok we're going to watch is actually the same type of stitch with a different person that stitched it with a different story. There's a lot of people really freaking out about this one. Um, so I'm really curious to know your guys' thoughts. This one is a tiny bit longer, but I really want to talk about this one because... I have a lot of thoughts. So yeah, okay, let's watch that. It's completely unbelievable, but it's entirely true. Okay, I have video footage of this. I will share it at the end. Nobody thinks it's real. Like it seems like it's doctored footage, but it's not, I swear, all my life. Basically, both my sister and my old roommate used to work at this like music school daycare center for kids in the Upper East Side. The music classes would happen upstairs, but downstairs in the basement, there was this like daycare situation and you had to work down there and they both hated being down there and i'd been down there a few times too it is really scary like you know when you just get a feeling about a place like that is the basement it was horrible <laughs> they would both like hear voices when their co-teacher hadn't showed up yet or like the cleaner would go downstairs and all the toys would be arranged in like a circle and she'd be like in tears being like are you guys playing a prank on me i seriously like i don't feel safe here the kids would all say really creepy shit like they'd say like there's a really like mean guy in like the tunnel like a little play tunnel thing or like like there's like someone mean over in like the dark corner of the basement so when covid hit obviously no one was going into the daycare it essentially shut down but the owners installed cameras just in case like anything happened while they weren't there and it picked up the most insane <laughs> shit ever it's a minute and a half long so here you go Sorry, I, I don't mean to look so smug. I'm just, 
I really, I really don't. I'm just excited to explain this one because I feel like I can actually uh, pretty well, pretty well, pretty convincingly debunk this. And a lot of people are thinking that it's real. And I think the reason a lot of people think it's real is because there's a real person talking about it and telling the story around it. I think that's what is making it more convincing for people is that she seems like a trustworthy person and everything. And I'm not saying she's not. I actually do think she personally probably believes this, but let me, can you guys, maybe if you've been watching me long enough, you can already spot the red flags that I'm going to tell you about. So let me put a picture of the thing going on here. And I'm going to put arrows for, um, there, this is where people are hiding in the video to set this up. There's somebody right here and there's somebody right here. Now, let me explain. The first one where the little seesaw thing is tutoring back and forth. If somebody was hiding there, they would have a string and they could be hiding and they could pull it to make it tip back and forth. And then right after that, I bet you, I bet you all hundred bucks that they have a wind up toy that they have right there and they have been winding it up or they had it wound up. And I bet you money after they stopped with the seesaw, they released the wind up toy. And that's why that thing that looks like a rat is like crawling across the floor, but it's not really a rat. It's not an orb either, like, or dust or anything like that. It clearly, it very much looks like a wind up toy to me. So that explains that and that. And then I also believe that there is somebody behind the camera, wherever the camera is. So they're off camera, but behind it, because notice the basket falling off the table falls towards the camera where somebody could be holding a string to pull it and it falls off the table. And then yet again, a toy on wheels conveniently, but it, they could do it without wheels, but you know, I'm sure they picked the toy that was going to move the best and they have a string attached to that. And whoever's behind the camera pulled the toy towards them. Notice the toy only goes towards the camera. The basket only goes towards the camera where somebody could be hiding. Just like somebody where the seesaw is, it conveniently comes out of a spot where somebody is probably hiding, manipulating all of this. Like, you guys, everybody can debunk these types of videos. Like, I don't even want to say that because I'm out of a job if they all get debunked. But like, you guys can do it yourself. Like, you can look at these videos critically and think like, okay, if this wasn't a ghost, how would somebody set this up? If this was not a ghost, like, let's just say for a second that ghosts are absolutely not real, or at least if they are real, nobody has ever caught real footage of them, right? I'm not saying that's true or not true, but just hypothetically, let's say that for a second. How could somebody set this up? And if there is a plausible way that you could set this up or you could see in the camera where there's people that could be manipulating things, then it's probably set up. And in this case, it's just really convenient that everything that moves could is towards or out of a place where somebody could be hiding. So I really honestly think this is set up. Now, as for uh, Brenna, I think her name is, I hope I'm saying your name right, Brenna or Brina. I'm so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I don't think that Brenna is lying. I think that she probably really believes this and really shares this with people. I would bet all of my money. I keep saying I'm going to bet all my money, but I would bet a lot. I would bet my integrity that the daycare owners or somebody that worked there was messing with people. Like, is it a demon or is somebody just messing with people? I can't speak for the children saying that creepy things are happening. Like maybe creepy things are happening. Maybe it really is haunted. Like what if ghosts are real and it really is haunted, but this video was still set up. And then they got this video and then they shared it with people who were had already worked at the daycare or knew people that worked at the daycare and they're messing, they're messing with you. They're pranking you. There's somebody who works there that set this up and now they're messing with the staff. That's it. Okay, TikTok number four for today yes, we're only on number four, is from Sarah Bear is the username or Sarah. I got tagged in this one also quite a bit, so I really wanted to address it. I bet you can also debunk this before I even say it. The video I'm about to show you is genuinely a one of the most convincing and terrifying video footage evidence I've seen of a ghost or whatever this is. Check it out. The fourth or fifth time I had watched the video, I noticed something in the corner of the room, which is actually my daughter's room. So I screenshotted it and I just zoomed in on it. My heart just dropped. I could feel my face, all the blood in my face ran. I mean, it just, it scared me. It just looked like somebody watching me. I didn't sleep that night. Here is a nice little screenshot of that in case you missed it. Yeah, 
That dude saw that in his house. Can you imagine seeing that? I would leave so fast, so fast. You would never ever see me in that house again because that looks like a, like a person with like a dead person. Like, I don't even know, but that looks like a humanoid thing, right? That's upside down. Like, I can't even look at it anymore. It freaks me out so bad. The person who tagged me in that was like, they are always peeking around corners because they obviously watch a lot of my videos. But yeah, that's what I also always say about those is that, have you ever noticed that in a lot of these viral videos, these ghosts, these demons always be peeking around corners and then quickly going back around the corner. They're always just peeking at people and then hiding away. And my question is, why do ghosts need to hide? And why do all ghosts seem to do this? That just seems really suspicious to me. But anyway, regardless of that, that in itself is a little... I thought I saw a big scary spider. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Don't mind me. It's fine. But regardless of the whole peeking thing, which already makes this really suspicious, again, how could we set this up ourselves? A lot of people, I actually got this from the comments. This wasn't my idea, but a lot of people from the, from the comments, and I agree with them, are saying that this looks like a scream face mask, which remember like half of America has that scream mask in their closet because of scream and wanting to dress up like the scream mask guy for Halloween. So is it possible that the man in this video or a family member put that scream scream mask on. They put a ladder next to the door frame and then they went all the way up the ladder and kind of turned upside down and just peeked out the eyes of the mask so it didn't look so much like a scream mask. And then they had somebody take a video of them. It's definitely a demon or is it possible that somebody just set this up because now they're on TV? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he literally made it on a TV show because of this video. So that's... That's all I'm saying. It looks like a scream mask to me. I just don't think demons are are floating up on the your ceiling and then peeking around the tiny corner of your bedroom door. But okay, what do I know? This next one is from WV Paranormal. This is actually not their video. This is a one of those accounts that just reposts everybody else's video and makes a shit ton of views and money off of it. So again, this one doesn't need context. We're gonna watch it first together. Somebody over there. Over where? Hey, what are you doing over there? There's a lot of stuff in this video that is makes it pretty clear that this is set up. This is somebody's like somebody's family member or friend dressed in a white outfit, probably with long dangly sleeves, and they are just slumping around in the distance. There is many reasons I believe this. The first one being that that little girl, not only does she not look scared, but if you look, she's like actively grinning in the beginning of the video. And she's like being very clearly coached to say this. She's like, oh, over there and she's trying really hard not to laugh because she knows she's helping set up this video. Second of all, you can clearly see this cryptid or ghost or whatever this creature is supposed to be. If you pause the screen, it clearly looks like they're just wearing plain old tennis shoes. And then this adult man sees somebody creeping in the woods that looks either inhuman or like a very weird human in a costume and he just follows it. Okay, maybe but follows it with the child with him? Nar, nar, not possible. Like, come on, who does that? If that was real, you would not risk your child's safety to come with you. And then lastly, that thing from his point of view goes straight to the left, like is actively moving to the left of the screen, probably so he can get more flashes of it in his video. And when he goes to follow it, he goes to the right. Like he doesn't even go in the direction that the thing was going in. So that doesn't make any sense either. Okay, this next one is a really, really quick one. So we're gonna watch that because I did think this one was really interesting. 
Tell me what the fuck this is. So you think it's like a giant motherfucking fish? No. It definitely is. Bro, it's something. This is the tail. It's like perfectly symmetrical. I keep getting hairs on my lipstick, like little tiny fuzzies. So this one, obviously, a lot of people in the comments are saying that it's a mermaid's tail. A lot of people in the comments are saying that this is a mermaid's tail. This thing is the size of a human. Is it a mermaid's tail or, or now hear me out, is it a whale? Whales, very common. We know they exist. We have a lot of them documented. We know they can get that big. Mermaids, we don't know that they exist. We've never had any proof that they do. Never any like actual verified evidence on camera. Which one do you think it is? Pretty sure this is just a whale and it either got Sorry to say this because it's terrible, but he either got severely injured and that happened or like it decomposed in a weird way, but it's probably just a whale tail that washed up to shore. Okay, let's talk about the blood truck because this one was really wild and I want to clear this one up because this is so scary and it also went really viral, but it, there is an explanation to it. This one's not paranormal. This one is just 1000% real, like the news had to report on it. Okay, so not only does something look that looks like a lot of blood pooling out of the bottom of this truck and it says it's at a Fresno airport in California and it has been there for like four days and blood's just dripping out, but you see flies everywhere too. I don't know what would attract flies like that except for a body. So of course everybody's freaking out. Now, don't worry, this was not a body, but at first people were like, is the truck leaking something? Is it possibly some weird thick oil that looks kind of like blood? No, it's not. Somebody called the police and the airport uh, authority, the airport authorities, the airport staff also looked into this with the police. And the story, at least I saw a rumor that they came and like sprayed or mixed it with hydrogen peroxide because apparently hydrogen peroxide and blood like foams up. And if it doesn't foam up, then it probably isn't blood. So they did determine that this is in fact blood. Ugh. So anyway, so they were at the airport for like four days and the airport security, what ended up happening was they called the owner of the vehicle and the owner did confirm that it was not only their car, but that it's not a body. They were a pig farmer and that it was a pig or multiple pigs in the back of their truck. That part's answered, but like, why is nobody asking so many? We all have so many more questions. What? They're acting like that. Well, that's it. It's just a pig in the back of somebody's truck at the airport. Like, what? What? I am so confused why they're not answering any more of our questions because this just raises so many more questions. First of all, the biggest one being why would you leave an animal carcass in your car at the airport when you're going to be gone for days? Even if you needed to do that, wouldn't that cause just like the absolute worst possible cleanup job of all time? Like, that thing decomposing in the California sun in the back of your truck. Some people on Reddit I saw speculated that maybe this person had been hunting and they got the, or they had the pig's carcasses in the back of their truck and they got an emergency call from a family member or something and they didn't have time to store the pigs in a proper manner. And so they had to run to the airport and they just got on a plane and left the pigs in the back of the car. But that... I, I don't know. That doesn't satisfy me at all because I feel like even with a really, what kind of family emergency would make you not at least put that thing in a cool environment or somewhere that's not the back of your car? And why is it dripping blood? Like, doesn't decomposing, wouldn't it only be dripping blood if somebody had like slit it somewhere? Like, what is happening? I don't know. This one really freaks me out because it's just weird that the news was just like, it's just a pig and then didn't answer any other questions. I just, I need to know. Now, to be fair, I could be really ignorant on this one. This could just be me not understanding. Like, I don't understand how people go about slaughtering animals or if he was a pig farmer. Like, maybe I'm missing stuff that somebody can explain as to why it may be bleeding like that or why somebody might do that or something like that. But I I don't know. I don't feel like I'm missing too much here. This one really freaks me out. And I really want to know from the owner's point of view, like I want them to come out 
I'm not saying it's something more nefarious than it is. It might just be a mundane answer, but I'm just really curious to know why the hell they would just get on a plane and leave a dead body of an animal in their car. That just seems like an absolute... PR nightmare. Okay, let's move on to TikTok 8. This one was also really interesting. I got tagged in this one quite a bit. This one is extra interesting because this one was allegedly caught on a live stream. And so people are saying like, it can't possibly be fake then because it was caught on a live stream, right? So let's watch this one together. Pay, use your, use your eyes, pay really close attention. This is the spot. Nah, come back out. Look, why they be peeking like that? Peek it. All right, so look, let me know. I'm gonna I'm let this stay. Just let me know if y'all think I should try to be friends with them. Maybe I'll come bring them some food or something. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna break everybody's bubble here, but it's not a little person, uh, not like a normal, like a little person, like a human, but like one of the tiny little uh, fairies or like mythical tiny human creatures. This is CGI. That's all it is. Like, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you look at it, it looks blurry. Like it doesn't even look like really good CGI. It's not bad. It's just definitely not like movie status CGI. Like it definitely looks like CGI to me. Like this thing is not moving normally normally it like blends it's like blurry it's just weird now i totally understand the whole live stream thing like how would he have caught that on live stream if it was cgi but i'm here to tell you that it wasn't actually on a live stream there's no proof anyway that he actually took a live stream there's no like video of the full live stream where he caught that it is very likely and i am almost positive that he just put a live stream overlay over the top of this CGI clip. So he just took somebody else's like live stream overlay of like so-and-so joining, so-and-so joining, and just took a few seconds of that and overlaid it on his video to make it look like he has this clip out of a live stream. But to my knowledge, nobody has actually come forward and said they actually saw the live stream when he was live. And there's no video evidence of a full live stream. So this is literally just CGI. I know that seems really obvious to a lot of people, but I wanted to clear that one up just because the live stream part was really tripping a lot of people up. All right, TikTok number nine is from Jem Colabrace. Again, I'm so sorry if I'm saying your last name wrong if you ever watch this gem, but this one has over 93 million views. 93 million. It's a really quick video, so let's watch it together. <laughs> Okay, does that look like the boogeyman to you? Because it does to me. Yes, that is a very, very creepy video. However, rest assured that is not what this is. This is also a very simple explanation. This has been since confirmed. Even though the video went viral, she did follow up and confirmed that it is indeed a raccoon paw. Granted, it's a raccoon paw from the biggest raccoon to ever raccoon in the existence of raccoons, but it is a raccoon paw. Jem had follow-up videos to this viral video and did in fact confirm that she had people go up and look and saw that not only was it a mama raccoon, but she had like six or seven babies or something like that. Now you guys know that I love rats, but maybe you didn't know that the, it, my love of rats actually applies to all rodents. I love rodents. I love rodents of all kinds. I think squirrels are adorable. I love bunnies. I love guinea pigs chinchilla like they're all oh, oh i just wish i could have a whole farm of rodents i love rodents so that applies to raccoons too i think raccoons are the cutest effing things on the planet and that is one of the reasons that i love the way winnie looks so much my dog because she kind of has a raccoon face like i've always thought she has kind of like a fox life like face which makes sense because she's part pomeranian but she also kind of looks like a raccoon oh maybe she'll come up here and i could show you her little face winnie come here come here <laughs> Good girl. So to me, she looks a little bit like a little raccoon. Can you look at the camera? Mm, you're just the best baby. Are you barking? Are you barking at stuff? So she looks a little bit like a fox, but she also looks a little bit like a raccoon to me. And yeah, she's just so cute. I just love raccoons. I love everything. I know, like, don't play with raccoons, obviously. In my house growing up one time, we even turned on the back deck light and there was a whole family of raccoons there with the babies. And raccoons are so 
chill. I mean, obviously don't get close to them. Do not interact with them because they can be really aggressive. But when they were just chilling on the deck, like the babies were just like hanging with their, their paws hanging off the deck and their little chins just resting on their paws. And they are just like the cutest things ever. I just love them. So anyway, that just put me on a tangent on that. I know that has nothing to do with the video, but I just had to share because that's why I like this video. But yes, that raccoon paw is insane and absolutely terrifying. So, so yeah, it is just confirmed to be a family of raccoons, but terrifying for anybody who looks out their window and sees that coming out of their ceiling. All right. The last TikTok that we are going to watch for today is a fun one. I don't think you guys are really going to like be like, oh my God, it's paranormal, but I have been getting a lot of questions about it. So I do want to address it. It's a really cute. This is a fun one though. Don't worry. This one's great. Let's fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> I guess. So that's Marfa. I am officially Marfa's biggest fan. I am a huge fan of Marfa now. Please go follow Marfa's account on TikTok because she has just the cutest TikToks of all time. I love hers. I know a lot of people know this is obviously not real. Like, I don't think they're pretending like she's real. They call her a haunted doll, but I don't think they're like pretending like she's a real haunted doll. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think she's trying to hoax us all or she or he or whoever's behind the account. But it is interesting because a lot of people are like, how are you getting her to walk so much and do so much? She's like drinking milkshakes. Then she's like walking out, drinking, going on the town and moving a lot. Just to explain it to everybody, like I am, I'm almost positive that we have seen signs of strings in the video, obviously, but I'm pretty positive that this is a marionette. I had one as a kid. You can buy them from like street vendors and stuff, or you can make them yourself. So instead of pulling a doll by a string on just like its finger or attaching a string to it, um, basically a marionette, I'm sure most of you guys know what marionettes are, but there's like a little wooden handle that's probably a couple feet above the doll and there's string attached to her hands and her uh, head. And then the little wooden stick, you could move the stick and then it moves the like hands and make, and you can move the legs and the head and make it look like they're walking. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is. That would be my best guess that somebody is manipulating the doll from like a few feet up so you can't see where she's attached to in the video. My biggest question though, because like, look at this video where she has so many, she or he, I don't know because the creator behind this has not come forward, which is totally fine because uh, this is cool. But anyway, so Marfa has a bunch of friends she has like a whole collection of these weird dolls. They're like really cute, but they're like all dirty and like they look old and like disheveled. And so it's just really interesting because I really want to know like where she got these, like, or did she make these herself or himself or whatever? And then like put the marionettes on top because yeah, like in this one, you can straight up see the strings like attached to them. So it's really not a secret that they're like marionettes. You can even see the strings in that video. I don't know. I just think it's a cool creative account and I want people to go follow them because I just love weird. I like weird shit like that. So that explains that. It's just longer strings and people being puppeteers, basically. It's a puppet. Okay, guys. So since this video, I the time traveler one took like, is gonna be like a half hour in this video. So I am going to stop it there and we'll just have to wait till the next one because I actually have a few more but I'm just going to include them in the next video because this is already, I've already been filming for like an hour and a half. So we're going to call it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget our sponsor, which is Simply Safe. Please, if you want to support the channel and you've been looking for a security system, Simply Safe using my code and everything is a wonderful way to support the channel and also get yourself a security system because everybody should have one. So, okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video to help the channel. Shout out to all of my people patrons that are going to be on the screen right now. Sh special to our newest top tier alien patron, which is Aeroids Oasis. And I really hope I'm saying your name right. Please correct me in our DMs if I'm wrong. But thank you so much. Aeroids Oasis. Okay, bye.